and start on conduct of business item A. Item, item 7A, receive staff report, adopt resolution, calling for and giving notice of the holding of a general municipal election on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019, and for the submission to the voters of a ballot question relating to a local City of San Bruno general transactions and use sales tax, authorize arguments in favor of in favor or against measure, authorize rebuttal arguments, authorize city attorney impartial an analysis, and waive first reading and introduce by two thirds vote of the city council an ordinance adding chapter 3.39 to the San Bruno Municipal Code imposing a transaction and use tax to be administered by the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Good afternoon, city council. Uh, we are here tonight. Uh, Good afternoon, members of the City Council. We are here tonight to talk about a proposed um, local voter approved uh, measure. And so I will give the presentation supplemented by our um, finance director, Keith Martini. So the objective of the, of the, re of the presentation is to receive a, the staff report uh, and we are asking the City Council to adopt a resolution calling for and giving notice of holding a general municipal election on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019 uh, for submission to the voters a ballot question relating to a, a local city of San Bruno uh, general sales and use tax to maintain community services. Uh, authorize the City Council uh, to conduct an impartial analysis, waive first reading, and introduce uh, by two-thirds vote of the City Council. And uh, this would add uh, Chapter 3.9 to the San Bruno Municipal Code imposing a transaction and use tax to be administered by the California Department of Tax and, um, tax and, and Fee Administration. So the presentation tonight will have um, approving, uh, improving fiscal sustainability. Um, we'll talk about our community outreach efforts. We'll talk about the ballot question and then we'll request uh, city council uh, to take action on next steps. And then we'll have questions. I'll turn it over to our finance director to go through our fiscal sustainability. I'm Keith Martini, your finance director, and so I just want to provide a brief overview of um, efforts that are currently underway or that are planned on improving the city's fiscal sustainability. First, uh, and um, very really important to uh, um, the initial stages to a lot of the progress um, taking place is the adoption of the city's fiscal year 2019-20 um, annual operating and capital budget that the city council adopted on June 25th, uh, just last week. Um, in, the, in the many presentations that we held on the budget, we talked about um, many of the budget challenges that the city is facing in the, in not only in the near future, but in the long term. Um, we were able to make significant amount of progress in the 1920 budget in reducing the annual operating deficit from just over $2 million in the 1819 <coughs> budget to just over $300,000 in the 1920 budget. So we made a significant amount of improvement um, a lot of that coming from the additional revenue um, generated in the general fund from property tax, sales tax, transient occupancy tax, and business license tax um, at just over 8% annual growth um, with expenditures only uh, projected to grow just over 5% annually. So um, holding our, our expenditures um, as, as tightly as possible, but we still do have a number of budget challenges. Many of them are up here on the slide, on the slide before you. We have a significant amount of deferred capital maintenance on our city infrastructure, including streets and roads. The current estimate is that we have about a $6 million annual deficit in our city's road, um, annual road repair program. And that number will only continue to grow to maintain uh, a current PCI score that, we current, that the city currently has. Um, we do have an existing oper operational deficit, as I mentioned earlier, although it's not as significant as it has been in prior years. There are rising costs from our, in our, for many of our contractual ob obligations, um, for many of our city contracts, but as well as uh, employee expenses with fringe benefits and pension costs. We have collective bargaining agreements um, that we'll be negotiating in the upcoming year. Um, as we've talked about before, the cable enterprise is a fund, defici uh, fund deficit. Our stormwater enterprise fund has a, has a structural deficit where we are not 
bringing in adequate annual revenue from the property tax roll to sustain the annual operation alone, let alone any um, capital improvements. Um, we have a whole host of other um, IT system maintenance issues and equipment vehicle funding um, issues um, that result in a significant amount of pressure on the city's general fund and our enterprise fund. So these are many of the budget challenges that we articulated during the, the rounds of budget conversations with city council over the past month, month and a half. Here are this, here's the overview pie chart of our general fund revenues um, in 1920. Again, most of them coming from property tax uh, in, in the taxes uh, slice, property tax uh, and sales tax. Um, you can see in the general fund that a majority of our general fund revenues are expended on the public safety functions with police and fire. Um, that's primarily um, the, main, the main funding source for those functions. So where does your property tax dollar go? Um, we've, we've mentioned this before. Uh, the city of San Bruno actually only sees about 15% of every um, property tax dollar that's remitted um, to the county. A majority of your property tax dollars actually um, get spent on supporting the public school systems um, in the county as well as the county itself. For sales tax, it's a really similar uh, percent as well. Um, the majority of every sales tax remitted um, primarily goes to the state's general fund. The city of San Bruno only sees about 11%. And what's before you this evening is to, a proposal to increase the sales tax rate um, for the city of San Bruno by a half, a half cent. And um, during one of the budget presentations, um, we talked about a comparison of the, of the of San Bruno's general tax per capita compared to other cities in San Mateo County. And we showed a graph showing that San Bruno is a very low tax city. Um, compared to many of our uh, the other cities in San Mateo County. And the increase of an additional half cent on sales tax, we would still be considered a low tax city. It's still far below some of the other um, cities in San Mateo County as far as sales tax revenue is concerned. On, uh, in late November in 2018, the city manager presented an overview of the city's comprehensive fiscal sustainability effort. This is a comprehensive effort involving multiple staff at multiple levels to better understand and articulate many of the financial pressures that the city is facing, both at the general fund side and the enterprises. Um, a lot of that work was done in conjunction with the fiscal year 1920 uh, budget that you adopted last week, a couple weeks ago. And there were three main goals of this effort, really understanding the challenge, articulating the fiscal challenge, and then development, uh, developing and implementing strategies to address those issues. And here was the overall timeline from that project effort. You can see the ballot measure um, with, the, with the box around it. That's where we are today. We are on track and have made a, a great deal of progress on understanding what our challenges are. Um, we've implemented a number of expenditure controls in 1819 to ensure that we came in on budget or under budget. Um, we've, had a, we've had a series of community engagement and outreach efforts that um, the city manager will, will mention in a few moments here. Uh, you adopted a budget, uh, and before you now is the proposal for a, um, a sales tax revenue measure um, to help sustain our financial stability going forward. So this measure before you tonight is a proposal for local control um, for our local needs. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the mo uh, significant amount of sales tax revenue doesn't even come to the city of San Bruno, it primarily goes to the state. And cities all across the state have had their voters approve of, of local sales tax measures where 100% of that additional um, revenue stays within the jurisdiction. And so that would give the city the ability of of having complete control over that over that uh, revenue source and allocating it to uh, the specific needs and services that uh, you as a city council and the citizens um, choose for it to go to. And we wouldn't make this request without doing everything that we can internally as staff to ensure that we are maximizing the revenue that the city um, sees from our existing revenue sources. So that was the first thing that we did when implementing the comprehensive fiscal sustainability effort. And this slide provides just a really high level overview of some of those efforts. We mentioned already tonight a number of times, we implemented a comprehensive development impact fee program that when um, those fees took effect on May 1st, and that will require developers to pay their fair share um, for maintaining and enhancing uh, infrastructure for the city for years to come. We've also done a number of things to standardize and modernize our billing 
um, and ut our utility billing practices, bringing a number of accounts that were, that were out of compliance back into compliance, and being much more proactive with our communication um, with our utility uh, bill payers. We implemented a, a series of budgetary and expenditure controls to make sure that departments came in on or under budget. Um, we, we talked earlier today about the Cable Enterprise Department. Uh, they've done a lot of work with renegotiating many of their longstanding contracts for, favor for more favorable terms and implementing a new rate card, again, to maximize uh, the profitability of that enterprise. Uh, and in the 1920 budget that you adopted, um, they are budgeted at a very small surplus for the first time in many recent years. Um, a number of um, uh, things that are currently in progress uh, one is we are in the middle of a user fee study uh, and a cost allocation plan. We know that many of our user fees that we charge, primarily like on the on development project review, uh, we are not fully recovering the cost of the city to actually conduct the required work on those, on those reviews. So we are attempting to re-baseline um, those fees so that they are fully cost recoverable. We, are, we have also engaged with an, out, an outside audit firm to conduct a series of audits on our primary revenue sources in the general fund, property tax, transit occupancy tax, sales tax, and business license tax. Those audits are underway right now. I'm monitoring them, and I'll be reporting back to council as, as we get some results. A staff will also be working on a short-term rental ordinance. Um, and then also analyzing any surplus or and or underutilized city property for potential sale or other revenue generation um, opportunities. So with that, I'll turn it back over to the city manager. All right, so back in March of 2019, the city hired Godby Research to conduct a survey of local voters uh, to really gauge their satisfaction with city services. And what we found out is that most of the citizens are happy with our services. They frankly just want more, and we're, we're fiscally constrained, uh, as we all know and as the finance director just articulated. Uh, we have significant deferred maintenance that uh, we can't afford uh, to, to uh, grapple with, and our residents know it. They highlighted the need to improve roads. Um, we also wanted to uh, assess the potential viability of a local funding measure to maintain essential services um, and identify those priorities of our residents around uh, those services. And so as I said, residents value and they're satisfied. Um, however, they want more um, and should the city council wish to proceed with a measure in either November 19 or November 20, uh, what the survey said is that um, the residents are in favor of that. Um, and so in November 19, which is shown as the first box, you had 58.6% uh, as a definite yes or probably yes, um, and just under 70% for November 20 um, at 69.2% with a definite yes and a probably yes. And, and so the question we proposed through this survey was, shall the city of San Bruno's uh, measure to fund essential services and facilities such as neighborhood police patrols, fire protection services, urban wildfire protection, crime suppression and investigation, pothole and street repair, increasing parking supply, upgrading parks and other city facilities, and expanding services to support local business by levying a half cent sales tax providing $4 million annually until ended by voters, key point, with a citizen's oversight committee, key point, and no money for Sacramento and all funds should be spent locally. Um, and so the voters said yes. And so should the council decide that you want to put that on the ballot, um, the initial polling uh, re revealed positive, positive news. And so what we have up here is um, the list of priorities that council uh, and the community has seen, uh, which the first one being increasing pothole repair and other street hazard repair. Essentially that's, you know, fill in the potholes. We have um, a significant amount of potholes, and that was number one, hazard repair. Number two sounds the same, but it's really different. It's ongoing street repair. If we don't have money to repair our streets on an ongoing basis, they only get worse. And that's the figure that our finance director quoted, which is we have a $6 million annual deficit. And so the quality of our roads, frankly, is increasing, not getting better. Um, and that is going to hamper our economic development. 
opportunities as well. Maintaining neighborhood police patrols was the third highest, attracting and maintaining local businesses, the fourth highest, uh, maintaining city parks and playgrounds, and then similar, maintaining and repairing those playground structures uh, was the, the next item. And so after receiving uh, that feedback, uh, we then con conducted a, another uh, community priority survey. And this time we sent an email uh, survey out on Nextdoor. Uh, it's on our website. And we sent a direct mailer to uh, nearly every, every address in San Bruno asking for additional feedback. Because the initial poll survey uh, had a response rate of or, or targeted to 600 people. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to um, go out and have more robust impact input and see, you know, did the larger community really feel that way? We know that the poll said um, that there is overwhelming support for a sales tax measure, but, but what did the larger community say? And so um, per staff's direction, um, we initiated this multimodal community outreach effort. Um, and we also sent a letter to uh, community leaders, so every member of our boarding commission, and we, uh, we articulated um, the survey, and we also asked them, are there community groups that you want us to meet with? And so Keith and I have been on a bit of a road show uh, giving community presentations. Uh, and through this effort, we engaged over 28,000 residents uh, to receive their output, and we received an additional 700 responses. Uh, this is the website that we um, have. It's Enhancing Your San Bruno, um, and uh, we provided a summary of our efforts and frequently asked questions. And so here's uh, another quick summary of that additional outreach. So we received 229 electronic surveys, 456 mailed survey responses for a total of 685, and I won't go through them, but frankly, it tracked. It, it, it tracked um, very closely to uh, the first survey um, that, that was conducted. So we know uh, and we can, we've confirmed that these are the interests of our community. Uh, we don't have the resources, but frankly, they want more, and they've been really clear at telling us what their priorities are. And so a few survey responses that we wanted to highlight for you. Uh, I have a couple on the board, and we, we, we've, we've taken off the last name, but we wanted to um, just provide you with um, a quick splattering of what people said. Please pave my street. Parkside Court, it's in bad shape and needs to be repaved. San Bruno has aging infrastructure like everywhere else in the region. We need to invest in a robust CIP to keep ahead of failures in sewer, streets, and water, and keep focused on fundamentals. Uh, police patrols are, especially during the summer months, break-ins go up during these months. Um, I fell twice, uh, and they gave their street address, um, so please fix it. Deferred maintenance uh, can become very costly, which we know. Uh, when I look at these, I really think about um, the app we have, uh, SB Response, and we get a lot of issues on SB Response. SB Response is a great tool for the community to communicate uh, issues, but you know what? It doesn't fix them. It doesn't provide us more money. It actually, without the resources, it just provides a very efficient way for people to tell us about that pothole that we know we don't have the money to repair or that street that we know we don't have the money to repair. And so what you have your community saying is, um, we want more. And, and we want more resources uh, and more local resources to uh, improve the infrastructure. And some of our infrastructure is over 100 years old. And so the ballot question. Um, uh, this is the ballot question uh, that is before you. Uh, it is, um, I, I, I won't go through and, and, and read it in, in, in detail, um, but it is uh, levying a half cent sales tax to provide an additional $4 million annually again, till, till ended by voters and a citizen oversight committee. Uh, and it has all of those services that uh, we know our residents value, uh, be there increasing neighborhood police patrols, additional fire protection and wildfire protection, crime suppression, pothole street repair, et cetera. Uh, and so the resolution and ordinance that is before you tonight, um, we, uh, it, it includes a number of different aspects. One is it authorizes the process of permitting uh, a, 
a community submittal of, of the ballot argument. It provides for the city council to provide an impartial analysis. There are a number of features to the ordinance, um, a little bit of a repeat, but it adopts a local transaction and use tax at one half cent. It allocates the proceeds for general purposes, uh, that whole, um, there, there's a long laundry list of, of, of need out. Um, it includes strong fiscal accountability provisions that's uh, until ended by voters. Voters have the power to enact it and they have the power to end it. Uh, and it also includes a citizen oversight board. It's a retail-based tax uh, and it will be administered by the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. And so um, we're here to request council action on uh, the reso and ordinance that's before you. And as far as next steps, we have the calendar. Um, this repeats a lot of the work that has been done uh, so far, but be between February and April, uh, we conducted the community priority survey. Uh, we presented those re results to council. Council said embark on an education effort. We have done that and, and that will be continuing. Um, the initial ballot measure and planning and prep has begun. And we're really here tonight asking council for the first reading and introduction of the um, ordinance and resolution. And that concludes my presentation. We are here for questions. Questions uh, for staff? <laughs> I only have one comment. Uh, yes, please. It's really the ballot question. So can you go back to that slide? So this is how it would, this is exactly how it would read on the ballot. So I guess I, I, I question um, why we start out with San Bruno Street repair. Is that, th that going to be the biggest in impact on this sales tax? Because no, um, I, I don't want to lead a resident to, that, you know, this sales tax is going to solve our street repair problem, and it's not going to. But it, it definitely is going to address and needs to address, you know, the, the, the public safety issues with police, fire, uh, fire mitigation, those are like really some important issues. So I'm not sure if, if or the re wording of that initial. Yeah, so it, it's the title, San Bruno Street Repair and Local City Services Measure. Uh, it's titled that way because we know when we did the, um, the priority, both in the initial survey and in the uh, subsequent survey that we had just under 700 responses to, potholes and roads were number one. Um, but what the community also said is we know that we need money for a whole host of other things mm -hmm. um, and $4 million doesn't start, um, yeah. solve, solve the road problem. And so it, it's purposely meant to um, be a general tax to address um, an entire um, s um, subset of services that we know are, 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 very, are very much needed. Um, and it will be a general tax and, and will be allocated by the city by the city council with a citizens oversight board on an annual basis. Any other questions, comments? No. <coughs> Clearly this is something that's needed in our city. Um, it's a little awkward that being up there, but it, you explained it well that that was the number one priority uh, for our residents. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in support of this. Michael. Thank you. forward with this. Uh, the, the survey results were promising and while the four million won't even address our, our street repair deficit, uh, if, if we don't do this as a, as a starting point, then uh, we're only going to get um, worse off. It's, it's going to be up to the uh, voters to decide if, if this is appropriate for us or not. I know the county has had a lot of success <coughs> with their half cent uh, uh, measure. It was uh, measure A was extended through measure K. Uh, very um, broadly supported and the county's been able to do some amazing things with that money so um, I'm hoping that we're able to pass this as well and start addressing some of our uh, shortfalls so thank you 
Irene? what he said. And <laughs> I just, I have a, I have a little concern about the providing for 400 million, I'm sorry, yeah, 400 million annually. Four million. Four million. Four million annually. Too bad it wasn't 400 million. Four million annually. Okay. Because it's, we're not sure about it, and I know we're tight with words, do we have any, can we put approximately, do we have one more word left? Or potential, potentially providing? I think we are at 75 words. Um, part of the reason why you see the, the cent symbol with half cent is because as it together it's, it's counts think, as, yeah. as one word. Okay. Um, I, I've ha I had yeah, thing in my in my experience politically, I've had that kind of thing come back and say, "Well, you right. said it's going to do this, and it it didn't. So how come? Right. How yeah. come?" Um, yeah. Um, yeah. We we are at seventy five words. Uh, exactly. Um, I, w I would tell you that it is an approximation. Um, we could come in slightly over four million, slightly under four million, and uh, as time goes on, it very likely will be more than four million and increase. Um, let me. I just want to take a, a minute to look at it real quick to, to, to re. <laughs> Re-examine. How about instead of no money for Sacramento, say nothing. Nothing for Sacramento. That gives you one more word. If, if, if I may, Councilmember O'Connell, um, one of the perhaps uh, less difficult ways to save a word is instead of saying expanding services to support local businesses, you could say expanding services for local businesses. Although that's not exactly the the intent, but I think it's been wordsmithed by uh, staff and, and the consultants, and I think staff was comfortable. I, I asked the question, you know, do we really want to say four million or can we say approximately? And I think the response from staff was that they're confident that that's in the uh, close to b being in the correct uh, ballpark. So that's why we, we left it that way. Um, and whatever arguments are included with it could uh, elaborate on how that number was arrived at. Okay. Well, if that yeah. if if we can't do it, we can't do it. But that's my only concern. The rest of it, I'm highly in support of. Uh, my my question on this uh, would be where it says increasing parking supply. Quantify. Oh, oh sorry. your hand just went up. Sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Go. No, no. I was just saying. Uh, you can go back to what the other council member said. But increasing parking supply. I know I would be reading that going. Well, what does that mean? So you're building yeah. something, is that for the garage, is that for additional parking, what is, how do you quantify that? I understand there's so many words, but I'm just trying yeah. to understand myself. It, it could be a whole host of strategies, it could be parking enforcement, it could be additional timed enforcement, it could be parking meters, uh, and so it's purposely um, open because we could, we could um, implore a number of different strategies. One, I, uh, one suggestion to save a word Instead of saying expanding services to support, we can say expanding services supporting local businesses and then add the word approximately here. So taking out Aww. one word. <laughs> Perfect. In fact, that sounds better anyway. Thank you. It's pretty good at this hour. It's really yeah. good. And, 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 <laughs> and, and getting back from Japan. And everything. That's impressive. Very impressive. Thank um, you. Other questions or comments? That 30 minutes ago. From council? I'll move to. Uh, absolutely. And, sir, uh, with these two gentlemen left, <laughs> please. And you should sit up closer. <laughs> you don't have to walk as far. Thank you. I'm there. And, and I apologize. Thank you. As by, na as by now, you probably know I'm Bill Ruggiero. <laughs> I want to um, thank city staff for the report they did, and, and uh, Jovan, I, I appreciate what you've done, and I, I see your work. I've learned a lot about you tonight, so thank you. Um, I think there was 625 um, 
uh, surveys that went out at, at first for 22 minutes and then the rest went out in, in, the, in the mail, the second mailing. But um, I'm just a little disappointed the city spent $85,000 to do this survey just to come up with what, you're, what you knew what you were gonna come up with. Um, but um, I, th I think this is, it's a done deal to put it on the ballot. I just, I don't like the finite or the infinite or unending date by voters. I would make sure, I would make sure I'm gonna communicate that to the voters that this is not, this is gonna be ongoing forever unless, if, if they approve it, so. Um, and in response to uh, Sam Bruno responds, um, I have a little bit of a problem just so you know with, with that because you can only use it with the app, your, your phone app. You can't use it with your computer or vice versa. I forget, it's, it's late. But I just wanted to make those points and I think this is going to go on the ballot and thank you for listening. And thank you for your comments, Mul, and thank you for staying uh, with us to offer those. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments from council or action? Yeah, yeah. So if I, I may, Mr. Mayor, given the late hour, you have three actions uh, to take this evening on this. The first would be to adopt the resolution yes. calling for and giving notice of the general election. The second action would be waiving first reading of the ordinance. And the third action would be to introduce by a two thirds vote that ordinance. Okay, so do we have a action from council regarding the resolution for adoption? Move to approve. Second. M motion made and second for the resolution. Council member Davis? Aye. Council member Medina? Aye. Council member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor O'Connell? Aye. Mayor Medina? Aye. Next we would need a motion and second to waive the first reading. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I hear five of voice. And now we need the it to be introduced uh, the ordinance by two thirds vote. I'll introduce the ordinance. Second. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Medina. Aye. Councilmember Salazar. Aye. Vice Mayor O'Connell. Aye. Mayor Medina. Aye. 